Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, and it's Whip It Wednesday. That's right. Whip It Wednesday. How you doing, folks? Well, there's no one there yet. Look and see. I didn't see anybody. Where are you? I don't know where you're hiding there, funny folks. Well, it's 11 a.m., and we're going to start gas. The Great American Auto Scene Morning Edition. Good morning to you. And one of the cars that is very overlooked but had a really great success story and a very quick failure was the Whippet. Now, the Whippet was an economy car built by the people at Willys Overland. It was to compete against the Ford, and it did quite well. Let's get this out of the way here. All right, so what they did is in 1927, for 26 year, but 1927 model year, Willys introduced a small car. Now, this car was to compete directly against Plymouth. Well, I don't know about Plymouth, but directly against Ford and Chevrolet in the low price market. They had a four-cylinder engine, but was very reliable. It was far more advanced than Ford engines. It had full lubrication. Ford used splash lubrication. It had a water pump. Ford used a siphon system on some of their early cars, where it's basically the, as the water heated up, it would rise to the top of the cooling system and go back into the engine. The Whippet had an advanced, for the time, one-button operational system. On the steering wheel, the button in the center, if you pushed it, it hunked the horn. If you turned it, you could turn on the lights. And it was the starter button as well. So it had a multifunction button right in the middle of the steering wheel. Saved a whole lot of other switches. Saved on money. The problem was the steering column had all the wires. The wires went underneath the carburetor. You got to remember in those days, they used updraft carburetors. <clears throat> not downdraft on those cars like we're used to today. For some reason, they used updraft, so it would suck the gas and the such up into the engine. Now, the four-cylinder engine was basically the same engine that stayed in production for decades and eventually found its way into the Jeeps, but this engine was very reliable. Now, the problem with that carburetor and the steering column was gas leaks. Shut the engine off, it's not sucking any gas out, does the needle in the seat hold the fuel in there? It leaks. And it leaked right onto the wires. What's going through the wires? A little bit of electricity. What happens when you mix electricity and gasoline? Barbecue! And that's what happened to the Whippet. Now, although it had that problem, they rewired them. They fixed the issues relatively quickly. It's either that or they gave you a bag of marshmallows to carry with you. But anyway, the Whippet was a small car in comparison to the other cars on the market other than the Ford T, and it was aimed at the Model T. As a matter of fact, some people even say that the Whippet gave Edsel Ford the motivation to convince Henry the T had to go, and they had to replace it with a more stylish, larger more functional Model A. And if you look at a lot of the things in the Model A, the Whippet already had them before the Model T ceased production. Now, although the Model Whippet came out in 1920, as a 1927 model, Ford's Model A came out in 1928. Whippet, though, was very successful. It came out and in its first year of sales sold over 100,000 units. Now, that was amazing for the time. No one was selling that. And with the combination of all the Willys Overland vehicles and the Whippet, which was called the Whippet Overland for a while, they became the third largest American manufacturer in 1928 and 27. They were there. They were right there. The problem was they didn't stick true to the design. They later came out with a six-cylinder powered vehicle, and no one noticed. It was one of those things where, why? That's not why we're buying Whippets. So think of Whippet as the, oh, the Hyundai or of the early days or the little Fiats, the Yugos that came out. Sold in mass because they were economical, relatively reliable, and people wanted them. 
It was an under $900 car. And that was fully loaded. So it was very comparable price-wise to the Fords at the time. As a matter of fact, you can get into a Whippet for just under $600 for a base model. And, you know, base model was just fine back in the time. Now, they also did something. They went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and averaged over 56 miles an hour for 24 hours for an endurance test. Now, that was excellent for the time. As a matter of fact, it became a world record because no other car under $1,000 could go that fast for so long. So Whip It did it, and they did it with style. Now, they sold over 100,000 cars the first year and put Willie's Overland Company into number third place behind Chevrolet and Ford Motor Company. They were built in Toledo, which later became the Jeep plant and was taken over by another company that went out of business early on. So they kept it going. So let's see who that company was. Uh, well, we'll find it eventually. I'll get there. But now Willie's was advanced in not only their ideas of building a car, as the Whippet had some things changed to it that no one else was using, but they were also one of the first to start exporting cars. And they exported right-hand drive vehicles built in Canada. The Whippet was sold in Australia and in Europe as well. And it was good. It, they sold in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, and the U.S. They were manufactured in Canada and the U.S. and did quite well. But as everybody, they got caught up in the Depression. And in 1929, the stock market crash took a big chunk out of their sales. It hurt Willys tremendously. And the parent company, well, they never really recovered until World War II when the Jeep became their mainstay. Now, the Willys Overland Company continued on, and they dropped the name Overland, but they continued on with the Jeep until Chrysler, or a, and they merged with AMC, and then Chrysler put them totally out of business. But the little Whippet, well, that's kind of an understated car, according to the sources I looked at. The Whippets are very desirable, but hard to find. Even though they were made, at over 300,000 of them were made during their short three-year run. They're difficult to find these days. The engine, basically, like I said, became the Jeep engine. The same engine that you'd see in the Willys Coupes that a lot of guys use as gassers later on. So that little motor did pretty good, even ending up in the Henry J and the Allstate later on. So it was a good stout engine, lasted for a long time. But whip it, well, it went away at the beginning of the Great Depression. A tough break for the U.S. auto market and a bigger tough break for the Willys people as their company suffered tremendously. Instead of keeping the Willys Overland or the Whippet name going and capitalizing on its reliability and its sales successes, the hierarchy there dropped the name. <clears throat> now, Willys, the main thrust of this, had sold his interest in the Willys Overland Company to become the ambassador to Poland back in those days. So Mr. Willys was out of it. He removed himself from the company, saw it go down the tubes as uh, he went into politics. But it's Whip It Wednesday. And that's a different approach to Wednesday. Corey Weaver, Kaiser. Well, Kaiser became the company later on. Kaiser Jeep, which was an offshoot or a continuation of Willys. And Rob Pratt likes the 41 Willys Coupe. Yeah, you know, the, the, the Willys Coupes were very popular by drag racers. They were light in weight, four-cylinder powered originally, and they were good. Mike St. Angel says he always liked the Willys Overland Wagons, yeah, and I had one. As a matter of fact, I bought it from Fast Eddie, and I liked it. Uh, circumstances being what they were at the time, I, I didn't keep it very long. Good morning, Rob. How are you this morning? So the Whippet, an interesting car. Herb Peterson, how are you doing this morning? But unfortunately, it didn't last very long in the marketplace, not because it was a bad car. I think it was bad management on the part of the Willys Overland Corporation. Here was their sales leader, and it was their sales leader. It outsold 
the other Willie's Overland products. <laughs> Rex, really? Talk to my ex-wife. I don't think she'd agree with you on that one. But anyway, <laughs> Willie's Overland Corpora Corporation, one of the major companies in the U.S. <clears throat> in the early years of auto manufacturing. And Whippet, a fine example of their engineering and sales successes. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition, where it was Whip It Wednesday. Hope you have a great day. Take care. Remember, share and like this with your friends. Please let them know gas is out there, and they are welcome to have as much of it as they want. They can catch some of the older shows on Facebook. They're still there, hidden away in my timeline. Or they can go to gotgas.com for the one-hour edition with Randy Cardoon. Anna Octane, Bruce Barker, myself, and Joe Walla. All right, you guys, have a great day. I'm Hot Rod Bob, and you've got gas. Brought to you by Irwindale Speedway, Irwindale Drag Strip, and we're hoping to get back on racing track in June. So look forward to it. Now, a special note, uh, and Dar, you know this as well. You saw it. The other day I said, well, it looks like the National Hot Rod Reunion was going to stay in place for Father's Day weekend. It's been moved. It's now going to be in August. I posted up the date and the information. Thank you, NHRA, for keeping this event alive. So the National Hot Rod Reunion, brought to you by Holly, will be happening in August at Beach Bend Raceway. It's a great track. You know, if you've never been there but you've thought about it, it is one of the only tracks where you can sit in the grandstands and be under the cover and in the shade all day long. Hi, Brett Mandela. How are you? And Doug Thorell. So check it out. I'm Hot Rod Bob. You've got gas, the morning edition. You have a great day.